We are here at the South Carolina Aquarium where they have very recently opened their newest exhibit, the Zucker Family Sea Turtle Recovery Exhibit. And I'm here with Willow Melamet, the manager of the Sea Turtle Care Center. And Willow, tell us what is all included in the Sea Turtle Care Center. Oh, so there's multiple layers that incorporate under the umbrella that we call the Sea Turtle Care Center. Um, so with that, we have the basement facility, which is our Sea Turtle Hospital. Uh, like I mentioned, it's located in the basement of the aquarium, and that's what we've had for the past 17 years since the aquarium has opened. Uh, we also have the McNair Center for Sea Turtle Research and Conservation, uh, which incorporates our medical facility, our surgical suite, um, our CT scan room, and that's part of uh, the Zucker Family Sea Turtle Recovery. So all three of those branches are under the Sea Turtle Care Center and all of that is under a uh, South Carolina Aquarium. Great. So you've got a lot of resources going yes. into the care and recovery of sea turtles. Most definitely. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And I love the new exhibit. One of oh, my favorite good. things <laughs> about it is that it really walks the visitor through mm -hmm. how you'd intake sea turtles and how the recovery process goes, starting with first response. So yes. how do you kind of get most of your sea turtles? How are they found? Yeah, so for us here at the aquarium, we're on call 24-7, holidays, after hours. Um, we always have um, that ability to get a stranded turtle call. Um, and that call comes from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Um, so the Sea Turtle uh, Salvage Network is out there looking for the stranded sea turtles, um, reporting them, and then bringing them here with volunteer transporters or with DNR employees. So people are out there, uh, like you or me, either just on the beach having a great day here in Charleston and, and find a, a sick or injured turtle, um, South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, who you'd call, and then they give us a call if that turtle uh, needs some medical assistance. Great, so if our viewers are out on the beach and they find a sick, injured, or dead sea turtle, mm -hmm. they can call the hotline there at DNR, right? Yes, and most definitely. And if they definitely. hook a sea turtle, Yes. They should also call, right? Yeah, so a lot of people, um, if you have a hooked sea turtle, which does occasionally happen, particularly on the piers, um, some of our turtle species are very susceptible for going after those bait on fishing hooks. If you hook a turtle, no problem. Um, give Department of Natural Resources a call. They'll walk you through how to either remove that hook or if it's too uh, far embedded in either the esophagus or down in the stomach, best thing to do is to get it medical care. Bring it here to the South Carolina Aquarium. We can give it all the medical treatment that it needs, perform surgery if needed, and be able to triage and treat that turtle. And the visitors kind of get to experience that because you've got some triage sort of set up for the visitors to take part of, right? Yeah, so it's really great. Um, in the Zucker family sea turtle recovery, what you do is you can come into that main gallery space and behind a glass wall is the McNair Center Surgical Suite. That is where all operations take place. So you could be coming in um, at a regular day at the aquarium and then there is a surgery happening on a sea turtle. Um, that happened just two weeks ago with a, an adult female Kemp's Ridley named Peach. We had a surgery to remove four feet of monofilament line wow. from her GI tract. All of that was right there for the guests to see with our education department interpreting that procedure. Um, so it was a great educational experience as well as that life-saving treatment for that turtle. And that all happened right here. Great. So everybody gets a really first-hand view of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Get everybody excited about the sea turtle. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> and you've also got recovery tanks so people can actually see the sea turtles while they're recovering and getting ready for release, right? Yeah, so another component is that it is a working hospital. So up in the recovery, we have seven tanks. The five in the front are um, big tanks, they're deeper, they're larger, they have great filtration on them. So they're things that we've learned over the past 17 years. But the tanks that we were working in the basement, uh, we figured out what works for us, what life support systems we need, what filtration, um, really to cater it to sea turtle rehabilitation. So when we built this new facility, we knew exactly what we wanted and we knew what to build and, and that's what we got, which is amazing. Um, so these tanks are perfect for the sea turtles. We're seeing larger turtles. Um, we also see ones that vary from two pounds to 360 pounds so really you have to play to all sizes so our tanks up there really have that um, what's really great too is from a guest experience you can walk up come face to face with a turtle um, it's behind one-way glass for them so it's minimal stress for them they don't know that people are viewing them but that people uh, get that nice connection with that turtle which is great right and you mentioned that you kind of had all this information about what types of tanks to use. So mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the big benefits to having a research facility in a hospital. You can provide that information for future recovery. Yeah, what's really great is that we are in the forefront of sea turtle rehabilitation and medicine. Um, and because we do triage turtles and we're the only facility in the state of South Carolina to get all stranded turtles, um, we're really paving the way to hone in medical treatments for these guys. So we see something called debilitated turtle syndrome. What causes that is largely unknown. So having the McNair Center uh, research is really great. That gives our veterinarians time to dedicate 
some of their time and talent to figuring out more research questions that are, are largely unknown in the sea turtle community. So debilitated turtle syndrome is something you see pretty often? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, something that I would say we specialize on. So this is, um, the symptoms are turtles that are severely emaciated, covered in barnacles, covered in that epibiota layer, and have been floating at the surface of the water for several months. Everything with sea turtles takes a very long time, so they can go several months without eating. But by the time they finally strand onto the beach, they really are on death's door, and it is up to us to give them that life-saving treatment, that supportive care. And it doesn't take just a few weeks to recover. It takes months to years for these turtles to really get back um, to the body condition and to the blood work that we need them to be at to be able to release. So a lot of time, effort um, goes into taking care of the debilitated turtles in particular. Yeah. So you get kind of connected with these turtles. They spend a lot oh, of time yes. with you. <laughs> yeah, so every day you can have a turtle that's been here for a year and a half and every single day if you come into work, you see that turtle, you know exactly what food it will not eat or does eat and only certain ones like salmon. You get to know that turtle on a personal level. Um, so when it comes time for release, it is bittersweet, but it is such a great moment to see that turtle that you've seen that progression of rehabilitation with and then they're finally ready for release it's very rewarding it must be great to see them it walk is. out oh it really is, is. yes i know it's rewarding for the staff <laughs> and the volunteers yes uh, and we were lucky enough to go out and see a release today of course mm -hmm. you had one this morning yes and uh -huh. two turtles that were your first turtles in the new recovery center right yes so you want to tell us a little bit about chum and marlin yeah so we had two turtles that we literally just released earlier today at isle palms county park uh, we had Marlin, which is a juvenile loggerhead sea turtle. He came back to us in April um, from being caught by a fisherman. So he had a small J hook in his mouth that was easily removed on admission. Um, but he was on that early stages of debilitated turtle syndrome. So he was um, in lower body condition, poor blood work. So it took several months for him to recuperate and be ready to be released. Uh, he was joined with his roommate, which is right next door um, in that tank next to him, um, Chum. Chum is a juvenile uh, Kemp's Ridley, which is the most critically endangered of the sea turtle species. And he had a fairly large treble hook that was um, in his esophagus after being hooked by a fisherman. So luckily that fisherman called the Department of Natural Resources and that turtle came to us, which was great because it required surgery to remove. Left untreated, that hook would probably have been fatal. So Chum and Marlin took about three months to rehabilitate and today was their big day to go back home. Yay, yeah. I'm glad we got to catch it. <laughs> yeah, it was really exciting. So our viewers, they love sea turtles now. Yes. They've learned all oh, about good. them. <laughs> yes. What can they do at home or when they're on vacation at the beach to help sea turtles and their health in general in the environment? Yeah, there's a lot of things and um, honestly the list goes on, but just a few. Um, right now is nesting season. So nesting season starts in the beginning of May and goes until October. Um, so right here in the state of South Carolina, loggerhead sea turtles are nesting on our local beaches. So making sure those beachfront lights are off. Um, little hatchlings will disorient to the house lights, so keeping those lights off is good. Filling in your holes when you're at the beach, the turtles could get stuck in them. And then also picking up any plastic or marine debris that's on the beach is really going to benefit those nesting turtles as well as the hatchlings. To help our turtles here that are in our local waters, um, decreasing your amount of single-use plastics is great. Uh, we've seen an alarming increase in turtles that have come in after ingesting plastics. We've had 18 patients so far. Um, five of which were just in this past year. Wow. Um, so we're seeing this increasing trend of, of turtles that are, are eating man-made materials. So decreasing your use of single-use plastics, using a reusable water, a canvas bag will all help sea turtles. Great. Well, it was really nice talking to you, Willow. Thanks yes. for telling us uh, oh, all you're about very the, welcome. the new exhibit. Yes. <laughs>